Mr. President, these are the state directors of agriculture and commissioners, and having been a governor yourself, you know very well the important responsibility that they carry. And as you know also, I was one of them before you chose me to come out here and to help you. And I'm very proud of them, and I know they're proud of you. Mr. President. I'm very happy to see you here, and I have to apologize for being late. Sometimes there are days that are worse than others, and you start getting behind schedule along about the first meeting in the morning. Um, now that you've identified yourself with, uh, with all of you, uh, the only thing I can identify myself with is having a ranch. And to show you my astute handling of agriculture, I remember at one time where I thought, gee, there's a lot of this ranch going to waste out here. And I decided that I could raise our own eggs, and I wouldn't have to buy eggs. And we did, at nice, fresh ranch eggs every day. They cost $1.65 a piece. <laughs> but I think the last time we all met was on St. Patrick's Day in 1981. And uh, maybe some of the personnel has changed, but I see some nodding heads. And I really only brought that up because it reminded me of a story that I think I would like to tell. It was the little Irishman that was in court wrapped all the way up to here in bandages and uh, claimed the result of an accident, was suing for $4 million, won the suit. The lawyers for the insurance company went over and said to him, you're never going to enjoy a penny of that. We know you're faking. We're going to follow you 24 hours a day and the first time you move, we've got you. And he said, will you now? Well, he said, let me tell you what's going to happen to me. He said, they're coming in with a stretcher. They're going to take me out and downstairs. They're putting me in an ambulance that's going straight to Kennedy Airport. And there, they're putting me on the stretcher, on an airplane, flying direct to Paris, France. And when we get there, they're taking me off the plane and putting me in an ambulance. We're driving to the Shrine of Lourdes, and there you're going to see the damnedest miracle you ever saw. <laughs> well, we hope that you're going to see the greatest miracle that you've ever witnessed. The, I think farmers believe in miracles, and for good reason. Since the end of the last decade, American agriculture has been under the gun. The inflation, recession, and jump in interest rates that hurt the economy as a whole were a catastrophe for farmers. I think they were caught more in the cost price squeeze than any other segment of our society. They found cost rising, and at the same moment, the prices of their products were dropping. Revitalizing the health of our economy and getting inflation under control, as you are aware, has been a priority number one for this administration. And I'm proud of the success that we've had. And throughout the country, we're witnessing a surge of growth in the economy. The economy expanded 6.2 percent last year. And January's hefty jump in the leading economic indicators suggests that we'll continue to have a robust growth rate. Now, let me assure you today I'm aware of the problems of your industry. And this administration is absolutely committed to ensuring that the American farmer has a full share of the economic prosperity that our country is heading for. And, We aren't going to be satisfied till times are good again down on the farm. And the progress we've made in controlling inflation has already helped farmers, as you're well aware. We took it from double digits to under 4 percent last year, and that's the lowest in 16 years. Interest rates, another heavy weight on our farmers' shoulders, have been brought down, although still not enough. They've got to come down further. The prime rate was 21.5 percent when we took office, and it's barely half that, 11 now. I believe that our efforts toward deregulation and decontrol have also helped the farmers. How many of you can remember the howls of anguish when, right after the inauguration, I said I was going to decontrol the price of oil? Well, that was one of the first acts as president, and the liberals had a feel. They made wild charges that decontrol would bring sky-high oil prices. Well, that's not the way it worked out. By freeing the market, we unleashed new exploration, production went up, and today the price of gas at the pump is lower than it was three years ago when we decontrolled it. 
Now, a gallon of gas costs 80 cents less today than it would have if we hadn't decontrolled and if prices had continued rising at their 1980 rate. And I, this word fairness is being used a great deal. I think that's fairness. Farmers have put up with unpredictable weather, but during the last administration, it was the unpredictable government policies that hurt the most. Just when farmers could least stand it, they had their legs knocked out from under them with an ill-advised grain embargo against the Soviet Union. This damaged our farmers while inflicting little harm on the Soviets. They could find what they wanted someplace else. The percentage of grain supplied by our growers to the Soviets, as you know, has dropped dramatically. But as you're aware, we promised and we have lifted the embargo. We've also negotiated a long-term agreement that requires the Soviets to buy 50% more U.S. grain than they did under the old agreement. Now, I believe these accomplishments, together with economic recovery, mean that better days are ahead for the farmers. And we're convinced that in the long run, open markets abroad and stable economic conditions at home will be better for farmers than federal management and handouts. At home, stable economic growth is the order of the day. Abroad, we're doing our best in the long and arduous process of opening markets for our farm products. We've challenged the European community's use of export subsidies, and we're negotiating with Japan to further open its markets for U.S. farm products. It's a step-by-step -step process, and we're committed to vigorously representing the interests of our farmers in every corner of the world. Instead of going on with these examples, let me just say that a strong farm economy is vital to a lasting recovery. Agriculture is crucial to our balance of trade, and 23 million jobs are connected to the food and fiber industry. From the farm to the shipping dock, from the processors to the supermarket, those 23 million job holders are engaged. And to improve the lot of our farmers, we are anxious to strengthen cooperation between the federal government and the states. I am grateful for all your organization is doing to enhance this cooperative spirit. And I also appreciate the innovative effort you've made to promote American farmers, as exemplified by your food and agriculture expedition, exposition in Atlanta, Georgia. Secretary Block has given me glowing reports of this show, and I understand that cooperative efforts are already underway for next year's exposition in Kansas City. A working group within the Cabinet Council on Food and Agriculture is conducting a comprehensive review of all food and agriculture programs, and we're laying the foundation for a farm bill for 1986 and outlining a proposal for a food and agriculture policy for the future. I hope that you'll be cooperating with this working group, and I know they'll need the benefit of your insights. I have every confidence that while times are rough on the farm, together we can make certain that they get better. I appreciate your being here, and good luck, and God bless you. Mr. President, I'm Leonard Kunzman from the state of Oregon, that state that sits right there on top of California. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, appreciated uh, your visits to our great state, and uh, at this time, uh, on behalf of uh, my colleagues, I want to thank you and your staff for taking time to uh, be with us. And I had some things uh, that I was to say to you this morning in regards to a message. Uh, uh, what's happening down on the farm, what problems we're having, the good things that's happening, but you know you covered them all. And uh, I really believe that you're, uh, you're very knowledgeable in the field of agriculture. I'm not going to bore you with those things. But I do have uh, one little article that was handed to me this morning. Can you imagine from the state of Georgia? And uh, Tommy Irwin, the commissioner down there of agriculture, wanted to know if I would present this to you this morning, and I think you'd enjoy reading that tonight when you go to bed. That's short, guys, Tommy. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Thank you very and, much. And it's, uh, it's just how uh, all of us feel about the job that you're doing uh, here in the White House. We're real proud of you. We also know uh, that you're a rancher, and uh, one time uh, we saw when you jumped off of that helicopter, uh, your uh, 
uh, something you were wearing uh, looked like it needed replacing, and so we uh, wanted to just uh, uh, give you that uh, as a token of appreciation uh, for all the good work you're doing here uh, uh, now and uh, during the next many years. Hey. Oops. <laughs> Thank you very much, National Association of State Departments of Agriculture. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Mr. President. Only I hope I can wear that for five more years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope so, too. And we also know it's a military secret the size of the belt, and we've kept it that way. <laughs> and we thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, I'm most grateful to you, and thanks. I didn't, didn't expect to go away with a gift, and I'm very pleased and proud. All right. Thank you all very much. Mr. President, we're very pleased with the work of the Secretary of Agriculture. That was unsolicited. <laughs> <laughs> Next. That's another thing. That's another thing we have in common. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Jim Graham. I'm a Carolina Prayer. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. What? Very good. All right. That. He's kicking me out. Well, they, they're <laughs> waving over here at the door. <laughs> All right. I'm still behind schedule. Thank you. Thank you.